prayer, and then we'll get into numbers. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this chance to come together and study your word. Lord, we pray you just bless this time and help us to learn more about you and more of your plan so that we can come alongside you. We pray this all in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so numbers, we kind of talked a little bit about it last week. It's where Exodus covers about one year, Leviticus covered about a month, this book covers 38 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so this book takes a mass of these unorganized slaves and makes them into a, an army that's going to conquer a land. And this, is, this book is about how God brings them to that point. It's called Numbers because there's numbers in it. <laughs> lots of numbers. <laughs> and names. Yeah, lots of names. Um, there's two censuses in here, one at the beginning and one near the end. Um, so the Hebrew name for this book is In the Desert, which is how appropriate is that? This is going to be all about In the Desert. Um, I'm going to read verse 1. We kind of we read verse 1 yes, last week. Um, the Lord spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the tent of meeting on the first day of the second month in the second year after they had come out of the land of Egypt. So they're still at Mount Sinai. They haven't left. And the tabernacle has been up for about a month at this point. So the first 10 chapters about are about getting ready to finally move so okay so let's look at verses 2 and 3 and I'm going to start this way take a census of all the congregation of the people of, the is of Israel by clans by father's houses according to the number of names every male head by head from 20 years old and upward all in Israel who are able to go to war you and Aaron shall list them, company by company. Okay, up to now the focus has been on getting to Mount Sinai and all the laws and the regulations. Now the focus is going to turn to getting to the Promised Land. So, starts off with get, doing a census. Now this is a military draft. Um, they are only counting those that are old enough to fight, just the men from 20 years old on up. We don't see an upper limit. It doesn't say 20 years old to 80 or, <laughs> but it doesn't mean there wasn't one. You would think there was one. Well, and they are able to go to war. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is a conscription. God is not asking for volunteers. If you're 20 years old or older and able-bodied you were in the army everyone um, so an interesting thing he he says count them head by head the Hebrew word for head is Golgoleth which translated in, into Greek is Golgotha mm -hmm. um, so because they were part of God's chosen people, they were in the army. When we choose to follow Christ, we're now in God's army. And we're engaged in spiritual warfare. Warren Worsby said, If God were to number the believers in the church today according to their ability to wage spiritual warfare, we wonder how big the army would be. Okay, so this census gives Moses and the leaders an idea of just how strong their army can be. Believe me, this is going to be a huge army. Um, and God already knew the numbers, but this is kind of for Moses and, and Aaron to say, wow, we can do this, and for the people. It helps them understand their resources. It also helps them realize... God's making us into an army. That means we're going to have battles. It's not going to be smooth sailing all the way. Back in Exodus 18, Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, had suggested they organize into, um, into thousands and hundreds and fifties in their tents. Now they're going to, 
that same base idea is going to be used here to do the counting. Just a month earlier, they had numbered them for the sake of taxation in Exodus 38, but this is a different one. Oh, Janice, you get the names. <laughs> 4 through 16. <laughs> if it was someone else, I'd offer, but I know you can handle it. <laughs> These are the names of the men who to, are to assist you. From Reuben, Eliezer, son of Shedder. This is a comment. I mean, it's completely unrelated. <laughs> Deion Sanders went to coach the University of Colorado Buffaloes. His son's name is Shedder. Hmm. Really? I thought, where did he get that? <laughs> well, right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's pull a common it. name now. <laughs> pull his name out of the... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Point in. <laughs> yeah, just a little, another little sidelight is they were at 1 and 11 last year. And <laughs> they had their spring game with snow yesterday in oh. Boulder. And there were 47,000 people oh there to goodness. watch that yeah, that spring game. <laughs> wow. wow. So, anyway, just a little football. Okay, okay so <laughs> From Simeon, Shalumiel, son of Zerozadai, Zura, Zura from Judah, Nashon, son of Abinadab, from Issachar, Nathaniel, son of Zuar, from Zebulun, Eliab, son of Helon, from the sons of Joseph, from Ephraim, Eshalima, son of Amahud, from Manasseh, the Malial, son of Pedazer, from Benjamin, Abaddon, son of Gideonai, from Dan, Eliezer, son of Amashadai, from Asher, Pagiel, son of Ophron, from Gad, Elisaph, son of Duel, from Naphtali, Ahira, son of Enon. These were the men appointed from the community, the leaders of their ancestral tribes. They were the heads of the clans of Israel. Wow. Good job. <laughs> so there's 24 names in this list. Now look those names over. Anyone with L, E-L in their name, L is God in is Hebrew. God? God in Hebrew. Anytime you see, like El Shaddai means God Almighty. L is God. So if they have L in their name, it's something about God. If they have Shaddai in their name, that's another version of God. It means all-powerful. If they have Zer in their name, that means rock. Anyone including Abi, A-B-I, that's my father, meaning God. Or Ahi, my brother, my brother God. So a, a lot of these names reference God in their name. Huh, that's interesting. Yeah, that, it was typical. Throw God in your name. Something. <laughs> yeah. <the> end. <laughs> yeah. They all meant God something. Um, so we see these organized among the 12 tribes. Um, but you notice one tribe is not listed. You don't see the Levites here. But there's still 12 tribes. Because they, they always, always, always have 12 tribes. When they're talking about twi tribes, it's 12. So since in this case, Levites, Levites are left out, they do Joseph's two sons as separate tribes. They're considered half tribes. But for this, they're a tribe. So that puts it back up to 12, even without the Levites. When the Levites are in there, the two half tribes are combined. So always 12. 12 is a holy number. It's a number of organization. Um, so we're going to find out more about why Le the Levites aren't included in this later in the chapter. Um, we're not going to go over these names in general, um, but these leaders have, have a significant job to do, um, and their names have a significant meaning. They're all Hebrew names. There's not an Egyptian name among them. So when the Hebrews were living in Egypt, they didn't, they'd lived there 400 years. They didn't start naming their children 
Egyptian names. He named them Hebrew names. They kept themselves separate. Um, but there are a couple names that do stand out. Elishama from the tribe of Ephraim, that's Joshua's grandpa. <coughs> so Joshua comes from good stock. His grandpa is the leader of the tribe. Um, Nashan was the leader of Judah. In Matthew 1, 1 through 3, it says, The book of genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers, and Judah the father of Perez, and Zerah by Tamar, and Perez the father of Hezron, and Hezron the father of Ram, and Ram the father of Abinadab, and Abinadab the father of Nashon. So... Uh, where are you reading from? That's Matthew 1, oh. 1 through 3. <laughs> Jesus' genealogy. Nashan is in Jesus' genealogy. So those two names, Elishama, Joshua's grandpa, and Nashan, ancestor of Jesus, is in this list. Okay, verse 17 through 19, Nikki. And Moses and Aaron took men, took these men who had been mentioned in, by me, <clears throat> and they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. Why am I reading for? Uh, nineteen. Okay. And they recited their ancestry by families, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of names from twenty years old and above, each individually, each one individually, as the Lord commanded Moses. So he numbered them in the of Okay, so these leaders have to count how many guy how many guys over twenty are in their tribe. And they're not small numbers. So it we don't get the details of exactly how they do that, but you would you would guess they probably use the thousands and the tens and, and you know, had each family group counted and bring it up. But they gotta count it. Genealogy was very important to them. Everybody knew what tribe they came from, and they could list their genealogy. They could recite it. They knew the, their line. Mm -hmm. um, and They uh, pretty much stayed in their own... Uh, once they married, they kind of it, stayed in the thought, in the man's... Essentially. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there was cross marriage, but well, I, then, yeah, yeah, I know that. Yeah, that's but what it was. Saying, yeah, they stayed. They went back to. Yeah, you became part of that group. one tribe, and that's you know, it worked out so well that from Jesus we can go <coughs> all the way back and have it all, have the line all set out. Um, So this, it says um, that they were to be counted according to their names. So it's not just numbers. We're not going to get all those names, thank goodness. But when they recorded it, they recorded the names. God cares about the individual. It's not just about numbers. He cares about each and every one of us. Now what's tragic about this is with the exception of Joshua and Caleb, every single one of these people are going to be dead before they get to the promised land. Really? Not one of them. Just Joshua and Caleb. <sighs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so now we're going to get to the section that we get the tribe and the numbers. We're not going to read all of them because they're all the same formula. I'm going to have you read verse 20 and 21. Now the children of Reuben, Israel's oldest son, their genealogies by their families, by their father's house, according to the number of names, every male individually from 20 years old and above, all who were able to go to war. Those who were numbered of the tribe of Reuben, of Reuben were 46,500. 
Okay, so that is the formula. So <laughs> now we'll just look at each tribe and what the number is because all the wording in between is the same. So Simeon, how many were in Simeon? 59,300. 59,300. Yeah. 59, okay. Gat? 46,650. Okay, something to notice about Gat. Everybody else is rounded up to the hundreds. Mm -hmm. they, they got 50. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some extra somewhere. Don't know why. They're the only one. Okay, from the tribe of Judah. Issachar? 54,400. Zebulun? 57,400. Uh, Joseph? 40,500. Oh, Joseph from Ephraim. Of Joseph from Ephraim. Yeah. Okay, and then Manasseh, who's also the other half. 32,200. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. They get, they get us. They, they'll give us the total. We don't have to. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, add them up. Um, Benjamin. Thirty-five thousand four hundred. Dan. Uh, Asher. Forty-one thousand five hundred. And Naphtali. Fifty-three thousand four hundred. Okay, so why this order? It's it's not the order. It's not the birth order at all. Mm -hmm. Even though they started with the oldest, <laughs> yeah, they did, but none of the rest are. Oh. Um, it's in the order of where they'll be camping. Oh. Of course, that we'll see in the next chapter. They're they're going to be assigned camp spots. <laughs> so, um, okay, so. 44 through 46. That would be you, Debbie, I guess. 44 to... 46. Okay. Find it. <coughs> these, are the, these are the ones who were numbered, whom Moses and Aaron numbered, with the leaders of Israel, 12 men, each one representing his father's house. So all who were numbered of the children of Israel by their father's houses, from 20 years old and above, all who were able to go to war in Israel, all who were numbered were 603,550. We know where that 50 came from. <laughs> um, so it seems like the census takes less than 20 days because by the time we reach numbers 10, it's 20 days later and they're moving. So they got this count done before that. You, can you imagine the massive undertaking of counting 603,000 guys? Um, now later, David is going to take a census, a military census, but he gets into major trouble because it wasn't in taking the census, but why he was taking the census. He wanted to boast about the size of his army, and he didn't talk to God about it ahead of time. Um, and so he got into a lot of trouble. And when, but when he did his census, it took nine months for him to get his census done. Look how long it took him to do the one heritage. Like. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't think they're still not done, are they? <laughs> yeah. Well, they were. The Israelites were in an, in, in, not in, they were in a close proximity to each other. Right. They were spread out all over a country like. David and in, in our census. Yeah. Um, so these numbers have caused a lot of discussion and uh, on what it means. Some people say, yeah, they're completely accurate. I kind of go with that because it's scripture. Yeah. Um, others say it's completely accurate, but it's really the numbers from David and Solomon's time and someone inserted it back. <laughs> that way. Um, Another, others say that it's a form of what's called gematria, where you take a mathematical calculation and stick it in there and figure it out. Average it out. Yeah. They probably did that on their computers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, others say that the numbers are, are misunderstood because thousands may mean a different thing in in their language at that time. Others say the figures are symbolic 
or the, um, they're purposely exaggerated or um, well that's saying God lied then <laughs> Others say that it was a mistake. The people that were copying scripture over and over, they made a mistake and added numbers by accident. Um, and some say there's no way the desert would have been able to support this amount of people. <laughs> yeah, they don't take God into account in that. So I still like the first one. They're they're accurate. Yeah. Um, so they did, they've done estimates on this and they take, they figure um, that this was 70% of the male population. Then they added an equal number of females and another 25% for children. <laughs> and so they estimate that it's, the total would be between two and two and a half million people. That's where they come up with that. But <clears throat> I'm not so sure because what tribe is missing from this? Levi's. They don't, yeah, they didn't take that into account. And the other thing that is not counted are the foreigners that are traveling with them. Yeah. So it's probably between two and a half million and five million. So um, I, I looked up some city populations. So if it's two and a half million, that's like telling the city of Chicago get up and move. We're moving the city of Chicago. If it's um, five million, it's like telling the city of Singapore, get up and move and being organized. Can you imagine moving? Can you imagine moving St. George? <laughs> Can you imagine moving? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know this has happened. I know in Houston where people had to be evacuated, and I know it's happened in mm -hmm. other coastal cities. Yeah. And they sat on the freeway forever, mm -hmm. you know, thinking, and some of them, yeah, some of them yeah. panicked that, are we far enough away? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so Regular yeah, I know season. that they weren't having to do traffic income, but still, <laughs> can you, that would just be yeah. real. And plus it's their, all of their animals. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. Right. they have to move all their animals. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, well, they, and they're taking tents. Yeah. And their tents, they have to carry their yeah. house with them. Yeah. Yeah. Their house, they yeah. Care yeah. Them. yeah. And in that situation, we, we know of a family that the wife was very, very ill and couldn't be moved. Mm -hmm. So somebody had to, and I'm sure there were many other people like that too, and they had to bring in helicopters or boats mm -hmm. to airlift yeah. them out. So you add that on top of, so mm -hmm. not only all of this, but maybe some of the people who were invalids and houses. Yeah. 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 It, it is just God's yeah. God. Yeah. It is. And and they were burying their dead <coughs> along in that Oh yeah. Well, you know, right. just think back to this country in the eighteen hundreds, the wagon trains oh, yeah. they came across. And they maybe had a hundred <coughs> hundred people on. Just uh, you know Yeah. No I'm Glad I'm living out. Not, not just the side of the cross, but the yeah, 20th, yeah. 20th and 21st century. Okay, so remember the census is, is about building a, an army. So a lot of people have a problem thinking of God as a God of war. They want a peaceful God. But God punishes sin and the nations that Israel is going to destroy along the way, we can't even imagine the horrible things they, they did. Um, God has been really patient with them, but they, they have to take the sin out. Um, we have an enemy to fight today, and um, our the Christian life is a battleground. We we may not always well, feel that. Well, that's why Ephesians 6 mm -hmm. says put on the whole armor of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Satan declared war on God a long time ago. So we are part of God's army today. Mm -hmm. But they had an army that they had to be part of. Okay, um... Betty, this is a long, pretty long group, uh, 47 to 54. 
47. The Levites, however, it is about to mm -hmm. okay. It is. The Levites, however, were not numbered among them by their father's tribe. For the Lord had spoken to Moses, saying, Only the tribe of Levi you shall not number, nor shall you take their census among the sons of Israel. But you shall appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of the testimony, and over all its furnishings, and all that belongs to it. They shall carry the tabernacle and all its furnishings. They shall take care of it. They shall also camp around the tabernacle. So when the tabernacle is to be set out, the Levites shall take it down, and when the tabernacle encamps, the Levites shall set it up. But the layman who comes near shall be put to death. Hmm. Okay. Um, to 54. The sons of Israel shall camp each man by his own camp and each man by his own standard according to their armies. But the Levites shall come around the tabernacle of the testimony so that there will be no wrath on the congregation of the sons of Israel. So the Levites shall keep charge of the tabernacle of the testimony. Thus the sons of Israel did according to all which the Lord had commanded Moses. So okay. they did. Okay, so now we know why the Levites weren't counted with everybody else. And why is that? They were taking care of the tabernacle. <laughs> yeah. And they were kind of their own little army to keep anyone else from coming into that. Yeah. Mm -hmm anyone but a Levite if you if you kind of wandered in there you, you'd be killed you weren't allowed to go near the tabernacle um, so we get the information that the tribes are going to have designated camping areas that they this whole trip they're going to be set up in a specific area um, with the Levites camped immediately around the tabernacle. If you wanted to get to the tabernacle, you had to go through the Levites. They are the mediator and the guardian. Now I've seen a lot of things about the Levites um, saying they weren't priests. They weren't priests in the same way that Aaron's sons were, but they were kind of priests. They're like helpers, maybe like Elders, elders, or, yeah, that kind of thing. They had a lot of responsibility. They were the ones responsible for taking down and putting up that tabernacle and carrying it, and no one else was supposed to to help with that. Um, we're going to get a lot more detail about that. Um, we also so, see that each tribe had a standard. They had some kind of flag. Um, and that's carried on down through, because, you know, see the Civil War, they were carried, oh, yeah. you know, so that's yeah. carried on down through the ages. And we don't know what was on their flag. There's different suggestions. Um, some suggest colors. Some suggest certain animals. In fact, through, when we get into each tribe, I'll let you know what animal has been suggested for each tribe, but we don't know. It doesn't say. I guess that wasn't the important part. Um, but each flag designated a tribe, yet they were still all part of the large group. So this is kind of a picture of the church today. We have different tribes, different flags, different church logos, but we have one commander, and we're fighting one enemy. We are one army for the Lord. Okay, verse 54. Never really you get short. Oh, the Israelites did all this just as the Lord commanded Moses. That's always a good sentence. Because <laughs> they're not always really good at that. So they did it. God's a God of organization. Um, Jesus liked organization too. If you remember the feeding of the 5,000, he had the disciples group them in groups of 
hundreds, and then by fifties. And then he got them. That's the way the army uh, or the military of our military is today. Yeah. 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 And yeah. God loves to count things. He counts the stars. And he has a name for each one of them, according to Psalm 147. Which we get to find out about, which will yeah. be fun. <laughs> so he counts the big yeah, things, right? but he counts the numbers of hair on our head, according yeah. to Matthew 10, well, 30. Well, he sure is not having to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, some of them are quick jobs, like pastor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all just don't notice. Yeah, so the hairs are there, they're just tiny. <laughs> it's called teach bus. Yeah. Okay, so Numbers chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and to Aaron, saying, The sons of Israel shall camp each by his own standard, with the banners of their father's household. They shall camp around the tent of meeting at a distance. That was it, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That was oh, one, one and two. Yeah. Okay. So, what do you imagine they've been doing up till now? Just probably camping anywhere they wanted. <laughs> but together. Oh, together. Yeah. 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 Um, but now they needed to be organized. Without it, they're just a mob. It's like first come, first serve, get the best camping spot. No, it's organized. In the middle of their camp, always the tabernacle. Always the middle. The tabernacle was to be the center of their lives. And then the tribes were set in a square to the east and south and west and north. Um, your versions mentioned at some distance from the tabernacle. Yeah, yeah. yeah God wanted his tabernacle protected. Um, this was in reverence to God and for the safety of people to avoid temptation to go very near. Now we're going to get into the order. We'll get the name of the tribe, their leader, their number of fighting men. That <coughs> leader has a huge drop job. So they're... They're going to be set in four different groups based on where they are camping according to the tabernacle. Three tribes on each side. And there is going to be a primary tribe that is, you know, like the due east, due west, due north, due south. Um, and then two other tribes that are next to them. But the middle tribe is the primary tribe. And I get, I, it sounds like they get a bigger standard and everybody's supposed to follow that one too. But then within their tribe, they have a standard. Um, the primary tribe is listed first. They'd be the main one in the middle. And um, when the trumpet would sound, they would pick up their banners and the people would march. Now, I w you would think they would get some warning or something because you can't just pick up. you got to pack your tent. <laughs> and they got to pack the tabernacle. So... It may be the trumpet blast, and then you got so many hours. I don't know how many hours it would take to take that tabernacle down. But. Okay, so verses 3 through 8 says, Those to, the camp, to camp on the east side toward the sunrise shall be of the standard of the camp of Judah by their companies. The chief of the people of Judah being Nashon, the son of Abinadab, his company is listed mm -hmm. being 74,600. Those to camp next to him shall be the tribe of Issachar, the chief of the people of Issachar being Nethanel, the son of Zoar. His company is listed being 54,400. <laughs> then the tribe of Zebulon, the chief of the people of Zebulon being Eliab, the son of Helon. His company is listed being 57,400. All those listed of the camp of Judah by their companies were 186,400 and they shall set out first on the march. So can you imagine, and this is just the men, so it's probably something like a household, setting up 186,000 This is when they were just moving, not, not necessarily when there was somebody attacking them. No, yeah, this is, this is for the moving part. But these are, these are the fighting men, Right. 186,400 fighting men 
on the east side. But there's Plus their families with wives them. and children. And yeah, the wives and children. And what we're not going to see is where are the foreigners that are with them supposed to camp. I don't know if they camp on the outside. It yeah, it didn't, it, didn't address it in this part. Or, so. their, or their animals. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Well, yeah. They, yeah, I have no guess. Yeah. <laughs> they probably had oh, their... Under, took them this long? Yeah. <laughs> 40 years to do this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so in the in their culture, the East was very important. Yeah. Where, where we kind of orient ourselves to the North. We set our compasses to the North. Um, for them, it's the East toward the rising sun. It's the whole... It symbolizes hope and uh, sustenance. And notice who, and the east is the doorway to the tabernacle. So, what tribe is immediately to the east of the tabernacle? Judah. Judah. Um, this tribe is going to lead the way. And this is the order that they're going to march to. You're going to have the tribe of Judah leading the way. And Judah is the tribe that Jesus, Jesus comes from. Is that yes. Mm -hmm. The Messiah so, is called the Lion of Judah. So God already he, yeah. was telling them this. This, this tribe is an important. Is well, and when Jacob had given his blessings for his children, Judah stood out there too. Um, and then you have Issachar and Zebulon. That's, that's the marching. Those are going to be the first three tribes that, that march. But does... This part is about where they're camping. But Judah gets the honor of being closest to the tabernacle, but they still have the, Le the Levites in between, so Judah can't go wandering into the tabernacle. Um, and just like before, this is the same formula. So we're not going to read all those verses because just the same formula. We get the same names we saw before, the same numbers. It's more about the order. So in verses 10 through 16, we get Reuben, Simeon, and Gad. Oh, by the way, um, this is where I have uh, uh, information on what they think might have been on their banners. So Judah, can you guess? A lion. A lion. <laughs> um, Issachar, they thought maybe a donkey or the sun or the moon. Zebulon, they thought a ship. Uh, Reuben, the likeness of a man or a man's head. Simeon, a sword or a city. And Gad, soldiers. And they're on the south. Yes, Gad is on the south, south side. side. So we've got east, south, so we're moving clockwise. Then um, verse 17 then the tent of the meeting shall set out with the camp of the Levites in the midst of the camps. As they camp, so shall they set out, each in position, standard by standard. So, you got six tribes, and then you got the tabernacle. You got the Levites carrying the tabernacle right in the middle. Oh. It's considered, in a caravan, that's the safest place to travel. Because if people were going to attack, they were likely to attack the back end first, sometimes the first end. But the middle was the safest. It also symbolizes that God is in the middle of this march. Then verse 18 through 24, we get to the west side. So we have Ephraim, who's an ox or a fish. Manasseh, who is a bull or a unicorn. And Benjamin, who's a wolf. A wolf? Yep. And then verses 25 through 31 is the north side. And there we get Dan, who's an eagle or a serpent. Asher, who is grain or an olive tree. Naphtali, who's a stag. So those three tribes are carrying up the rear. And what did I just say about the rear? They can get attacked first. They're, they generally get attacked first in a caravan. Although you have to think about 
attacking a caravan with a few million people in it. <laughs> but it was easiest to attack the back, go and attack and leave. Where you attack the middle and it's not so easy to leave. Probably the people at the front and didn't know they were attacked. Yeah, so far, yeah. Yeah, can you imagine how much, how many miles they had to stretch out for this thing? Yeah. Okay, so now we're back to reading things. And we're getting through two chapters and starting a third at least. So, and then, okay, so verses 32 through 34, if you want to. These are the people of Israel as listed by their father's houses. All those listed in the camps by their companies were 603,550. But the Levites were not listed among the people of Israel as the Lord commanded Moses. Thus did the people of Israel, according to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so they camped by their standards, and so they set out each one in his clan according to his father's house. Can you imagine watching this march? Mm -hmm. No wonder people were afraid of it. Can you imagine organizing all of this? No. And, and getting it moving? And How do you let all of those people know? I mean... As many people, and then just to even get the heads of it together to go back yeah. and to, it, it's mind boggling. Really. And they do it over and over and over and over again. 40 years worth of traveling. And apparently, it was really beautiful to watch. Um, <coughs> Balaam, who we'll run into in chapter 24. He described the beauty and order of the camp. He said, How lovely are your tents, O Jacob, your dwellings, O Israel, like valleys that stretch out, like gardens by the riverside, like aloes planted by the Lord, like cedars beside the waters. Wow. So it must have been something to see. Can't imagine. Mm -mm. And I, I know I've seen before how this layout, because of the sizes of the tribes and everything, it ends up looking somewhat like a cross in its shape. Um, I have a picture. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it does. So, where, where did this information, where did all this detail of information come from? Something one, that they found. I mean, I don't know. One of the things about the Hebrews. This is what? One of the things about the Hebrews is they were great at telling so they wrote their children off. over oh, and over. <laughs> yeah. Oral recital. Um, it doesn't, nothing seemed to be written down until Moses. So, how did the archaeology people find something that would. I mean, they didn't tell this all the way down to our generation. They told it, the told it down to Moses, yeah, and, and Moses, Moses wrote it. it all. Moses recorded it all? Yeah, this That's is Moses writing this all. But, oh, so, yeah. so it was all by word, though. Well, at this point, Moses is part of it, so he is recording it. Okay. And he may have had people helping him record it. So where did they find what Moses wrote? Um, it was. I mean, it was written. Stone or something. Well, it was written on scrolls, and pat and rewritten and rewritten. It it was their Bible. So as Moses wrote it, I don't know what he wrote on, but eventually it got put onto um, onto scrolls, and then passed down. Um, they make new copies of the scrolls and. So the Dead Sea Scrolls probably had some of this. Oh yeah, the Dead Sea Scrolls <laughs> had, had a lot of this. But after Moses wrote this, the word, the written words were passed down from generation to generation. They had it written. Before that, all the Genesis stuff, that was the oral tradition that they would just tell, tell their, their children. Um, mm -hmm. They would be teaching. You know, I think it's almost every people group, there's a story of the blood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that story, even though it wasn't, not every people group tells it according to scripture, almost every group. So that's why a lot of missionaries go through and tell the story 
they, from the beginning, if they're going to share the gospel, because so many of them can relate to, oh, we've heard yeah. about the flood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But after Moses, and this is not just with Israel and the people, but there were people that their their assigned jobs were to just to copy what had been written over and over and over and over again. And then they found it. I, I mean, I, I I can understand somebody did it, but I'm wondering where. Well, they ha- they hadn't lost it. They passed it on generation. You mean, to you mean into whenever? Yeah, that's, the first they, Bible that's everybody. Um, mm-hmm. they all, what are the books that are as old as the, um, Palmer and Odyssey? Those are the only two books that are about the same, you know, age. Yeah. So they have so they have written documents of that being that written period. down. So that proved that oh, well, the Bible could have been written down too. Yeah. Okay. So when those things were copied over and over and over again, yeah, yeah. by people that, that was, was their job. To I was always over under the impression that that it was the scribes. Was it was that Later, their job? That could have been anybody. Yeah. That would have yeah. been the job, I think, of any culture. Yeah. Person there was somebody. Who, there was a yeah. group. That that's all they did. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, and the and scribe means say. to write down. Yeah. Um, a lot of times you'll see them um, in history titled as copyists. Yeah. Uh huh. So they're just yeah. they're copying over what, and that's what a scribe would. Started right. off doing, but right. yeah, they true. were they that's were the writers. They did was, uh, yeah, and keep them safe. Yeah, There's a lot of detail. Uh, that is yeah. Yeah. Oh, detail in this. Okay, I'm terrible. So Janice and Audrey helped me. But is it in Timothy every jot and tittle? Mm-hmm. I think so. That means that yeah. every mark was exactly the way it should be. Yeah. So when their job was to copy, 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 it had to be exactly. And I, I, I believe this is more detailed than any other culture. Chinese probably, they have a lot written about their culture, but not this detail. Mm-hmm. Um, and they but that, no there was a purpose. Had, <laughs> oh, yeah. And on stone, right? Yeah, no, they meant not or, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, part of the time passes. Yeah. Is that what the virus? Yeah. Oh, and, and, and troll. Yeah. And if they, yeah. if, the, if the copyist made a mistake, Right. Whatever utensil they were using to write, throw it away, throw yeah, away the whole thing, start over. No, no. Yeah. Uh, so they were really careful. Had more no, this, had this had to, this was God's holy word and they treated it as God's holy word. So, so they knew then they needed to They needed to get it down and get it down right. Get it down right. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. everyone's well yeah. I'll run into something that says they think they made a mistake when they were copying. Mm, not likely. <laughs> but, but what Audrey said too, though, that, that was, it was um, commanded to the parents that you tell your children, every generation, you tell, yeah. this is what God has done over and over as you walk. It, it's in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy yeah. 6. They, over and over as you walk along the, the road, yeah. you tell the story. Yeah. So, oral. And there and there's um, there's groups in Africa that had done the same thing. Um, if you ever watch the movie Roots, at the end they go back and they can name their generations because it's been passed over and over mm-hmm. down down through the children. They never wrote it down where God had this written down. So well, and we're in an area where they're very keen on genealogy. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can right. Yeah, there's a library here in town. You can go back and yeah, look there's up your own genealogy. I've been told there is a a cellar or or something someplace up around Salt Lake where every side of the mountain is. Yeah. What'd yeah. you say? Side of the mountain. Yeah. yeah. Oh, is it? Is that what it is? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And everything mm-hmm. is written down that they know of from as far back. Yeah. Well, now they have they have a website. <laughs> that does, that has, yeah, it's really interesting to look at it. Although I, I kind of stopped. I kind of stopped when it said my ancestor was Mary Magdalene and Jesus. <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> I, I, I have access to the. Anyone can get access to the um, LDS website yeah. with genealogies, and I tra- started tracing. It was really interesting. 
until I got to my line that descended from Mary Magdalene and Jesus. Oh, <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, okay. Why? I don't think so. Do I but. Bow to you? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure a lot of you would have that same line, but that's that's where it's okay. That's not I right. don't want to know that. <laughs> yeah, I know yeah. that would be something I wouldn't want to know either. Yeah. I, I so think. after I saw that, I thought I'm going to research. Do they believe that Jesus and Mary Magdalene? And some to, do, some don't. I went to one of our neighborhood uh, women's meeting uh, in Stonecliff, and. <laughs> Somebody, I mean, there's a website, I can't remember, it's Family Search. Or what. Family Search. They, yeah, they put their name in, and then, it, you know, they would trade, it would give you all these, and then, you know, and somebody find out that they were related to this person over here. I mean, they spent, like, <laughs> that was the majority of their hour. Oh. Spend, you know, who they might be related to in that group of women. Yeah. And, then, you know. So. I don't know if any of you have been to that. Whatever they uh, family research, whatever it is down mm -hmm. by the temple. I I did go in there one day. And what was it like? It's pretty amazing what they have in there with the computers and what you can look up, and they have a lot of um, things along the wall that that show who's related to whomever. It's kind of issue. yeah. Well, and and the issue with their site is that. I can go in and if I know something, I can put it in. Anyone else can put things in too. So things right. things have gotten kind of messed up. And um, my nephew, who's who was LDS, says you go four generations back and it's all probably all messed up. Mm. You know, don't trust anything oh. farther oh, back than what you know. John Till is ninety five eighteen. Oh okay. Okay, so let's start looking at numbers three. And this is all about the Levites and what their jobs are. So verses 1 through 4. This is the account of the family of Aaron and Moses at the time the Lord talked with Moses on Mount Sinai. The names of the sons of Aaron. You get the names all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to start saying N. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The names of the sons of Aaron were Nadab, the firstborn of Bahu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. These were the names of Aaron's sons, the anointed priests, who were ordained to serve as priests. Nadab and Abihu, however, fell dead before the Lord when they made an offering with an unauthorized fire before him in the desert of Sinai. They had no sons, so only Eleazar and Ithamar served as chief priests during the lifetime of their father, Aaron. Okay, so it starts off by saying the family of Aaron and Moses. It's unusual for Aaron to be listed first, even though he's the older one. Yeah, sure. Moses had the, the more, was, had more honor mm -hmm. accorded to him, so this is unusual for Aaron to be first. We that don't see Moses. They were the priests? Yeah, and this chapter is about the priests. The priests yeah. Um, we don't see Moses' sons get, being given any leadership roles. Who knows what they did? Um, but they were Levites because Moses is from the tribe of Levi. So maybe they were part of the tabernacle crew or something. So Aaron's sons are different. They are the priests. They are Aaronites. Counting Aaron... It starts off with five of them. They're the only ones that are authorized to handle the sacrificial blood, touch the altar, enter the tabernacle. But then there was a problem, and the oldest two messed up, and God struck them dead. So now, you, they have three. Three people to handle all that stuff. Now they're going to have sons and their group's going to grow, but right now that's a lot of work for three people. Um, so Eleazar and Ithamar are the third and fourth sons. Since the oldest two were killed, they're going to inherit the priesthood. Um, the meaning of the word ordained, um, some versions use ordained or some use a different word. It means to have one's hands filled. 
in the in the ordination service, Moses placed some meat from the sacrifice in the hand of the ordained. So have your hands filled. So when we ordain someone, we're filling their hands up. Um, I named my son Aaron from him. <laughs> um, you know what? I do have to go up and do oh, directories. So I think we are going to end there and we'll start with verse 5 next week. So I'm going to shut off the camera. Okay.